And when you clear out these old ideas of being married by a certain age or having kids by a certain age, and when you let all of that go, you can start to really focus and put all of your attention and energy towards the possible selves and the sides of you that you actually want to create. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm coming at you from a little bit lower because it's Sunday and it's just that kind of day. <laughs> so welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni and I'm a life coach and this channel is called Betty Grow Up. It's a channel dedicated to taking control of your mental health. I'm so glad you guys are back with me on another Sunday um, and I wanted to talk about something really interesting. Again, kind of with the theme of fall and starting over or having new goals or kind of moving forward in life, I wanted to talk about possible selves and the theory of possible selves. So um, this is actually a theory that I studied a lot in college. Um, I will link the study in the description. Basically, just to give you a very, very quick summary, Possible Selves was a theory developed by Marcus Nurius in 1986, and they discovered that we all kind of have different ideas of what we're going to grow up to be, and these kind of become our possible selves. Um, so kind of depending on where we grow up and the society around us, we kind of get these ideas of what it's going to look like when we get older, the different things that we could be. For example, even if you think about like cycles within a family um, or even the cycle of abuse, as sad as it is to talk about that, it's true. Like there can be, you know, negative emotions, negative trauma, or just abusive patterns passed down from generation to generation to generation. And that's not just a coincidence, it's the fact that because someone has been brought up in that kind of environment, that's what they're taught, that's what they learn, that's what they learn to be. And obviously I'm not saying that you can't overcome that, there always will be tons of people that overcome those kinds of situations and don't replicate it, but that's just one example of how in a myriad of different ways and it kind of become what we see when we grow up. And it's the same thing when it comes to, you know, just jobs. If you look at, you know, just the, the American nation, you know, it's kind of praised for being this capitalistic nation where you can rise to the top. But at the same time, it's actually found that most people are making about the same money, especially when you take into account inflation that their parents are making. So for example, the children who are raised in a blue collar household will continue on in other blue collar employment opportunities. And the same thing for higher income families, there's more of a likelihood that their children will also have higher income and obviously part of that is inheritance and things like that but also just you know like i said before the, the schools you go to the ideas that you're being taught what you're you know being kind of pushed towards has a huge influence on where you end up in life obviously the reason that i bring this up and then i wanted to talk about it today is that what marcus and Nuri has found in the possible selves theory is that these have a huge huge influence on what we become you know even if you're an adult and you say well you know no one's told me what i should be in 20 or 30 years, it's still in your mind and it's still forming your behavior and your decisions. The reason that I say we need to be more aware of this is because in psychoanalysis, it's generally believed that you're not going to ever get to a point in your life where you're never fearful, where you're never anxious. And that shouldn't be the case. If you're driving and someone merges on the highway too soon and you're about to get sideswiped or t-boned in an intersection, you want to be fearful. You want to have those reflexes flexes kick in and kind of that adrenaline to help you survive so you don't ever want to lose your sense of fear you don't want to lose your sense of anxiety it's just about how you manage those emotions and how to use them appropriately if you do learn how to manage these things you could at least become aware of what your triggers are kind of know when you could expect them or what might be setting them on and then at least you kind of have an inkling of an idea why you're having a panic attack and then over time you could kind of learn how to manage that better and better and to deal with that fear and kind of coach yourself through those feelings. No, however, you cannot manage your emotions, like I said, without knowing yourself, without knowing your triggers. And psychoanalysis also says that self-knowledge, knowing yourself, comes from a combination of knowing your actual self and who you are on a day-to-day -day basis, while also knowing all your possible selves. Who were you intended to become? What did people say that you were going to be? So it's important to kind of be able to balance what was I told I was gonna be? What was I supposed to be? What ideas did I grow up with about myself? What did people tell me about myself? And then how did that affect who I am on a day-to-day -day basis? If you don't know both of those, then you can't start to know your full self. 
if you don't know your full self, you're not including all of the little things that are contributing to making you who you are. Then if you're missing giant pieces of the puzzle, then you're gonna have a harder time figuring out what your triggers are and figuring out, you know, why you feel a certain way about certain things. So it all completely ties in together. But as you understand yourself, you start to empathize with yourself and you start to say, okay, of course, because of all the trauma I had or all the adults that misunderstood me when I was really, really young or of, you know, different things that I faced in my childhood, of course I would be resistant to trusting people. And then slowly you start to kind of forgive yourself and you understand your story and that really is going to jumpstart your process of healing. But again, you cannot, you know, just start healing and get to the good stuff without going through the mud and going through a lot of the bad stuff. And that's the scariest part, but you have to trust in yourself. You have to believe that there's another side. And the thing is, only you can believe that for yourself. Other people could motivate you and you could get a life coach like myself or you could get a therapist that's on your side. And while we will always be on your side and always be rooting for you, in the in the you know depths of night, the only person that can really help yourself believe that there is something beyond, that there is a nicer, better side of yourself, there is a part of yourself that you, you know, long to get to know, you have to remind yourself that that's within yourself. And that trust, that inkling of belief is the hardest, hardest first step. But when you kind of take that first step, that's the biggest first step you will ever take. Then the more and more you learn about yourself, the further along you get on your personal journey. You're never going to be perfect. You're never going to be fearless. But you're going to get so much better at understanding yourself, at loving yourself, at realizing what your imperfections are, and loving those imperfections and saying, I can change the things about myself that I want to change, but I'm also going to love myself for not being perfect because those are the sides of myself that I love. Just observe yourself and that's where you're going to develop a lot of that self-love and that empathy that I'm talking about. But before I leave you, I definitely want to give you um, a, a quick exercise that you can try. I'm just going to challenge you to identify two of the possible selves that you have been taught to believe about yourself. For example, even though I lost the ability to speak, you know, some of the languages that I knew at a young age, I always kind of had this idea in my mind that when I was a mother, I'd be able to speak these languages to my children. And yes, I always can go back and intentionally relearn that language or, you know, really sit down and take some classes. I have to kind of give up the idea I realized that I was just magically going to know this. It's not going to take any, it's not going to be effortless at this point. I'm going to have to either sit down and intentionally do it or it's just not going to be available to me and that's just something that is going to be different about my life than what I thought. You can do this when it comes to, you know, where you saw yourself financially, what you thought you were going to be in terms of a career, in terms of education, in terms of children, in terms of where you were going to live. Like all of these different things are just all these aspects, but they end up coming together to create our lives. Like where you live, what your job is, what your family looks like, all of that makes up who you are on a day-to-day -day basis. So all these ideas are, you know, potentially just kind of living in our subconscious and helping us and making us create this idea of ourselves, but maybe it's not what we want. That's why I encourage you to explore this topic. So I want you to identify two different possible selves, um, and if you want, you can just write them down or, you know, just jot down some ideas in like a bullet form, but if you want to go above and beyond, you could also just kind of do a little sketch of like what that person would be that can kind of help you like in a visual way say like okay that's a possible self but I'm not gonna compare that to who I think I should be anymore. Does that make sense? It kind of helps you like distance who you are from that image that you see on paper. Um, and then I want you to create two new possible selves that you actually want to be. So maybe, you know, you thought you were going to be like this amazing fitness person and honestly you realize that you just want to be happy, you want to be healthy, you want to work out when you feel like working out, but you also want to eat pizza when you feel like eating pizza. That's totally fine, but maybe you're letting kind of that super fitness bodybuilder side of you go and saying I'm just going to do something that's sustainably healthy. So you know, one is what your possible self used to be, and the second one is what your intentional possible self is. Identify at least two possible selves that you were taught to be, 
and then I want you to create two possible selves that are intentionally ideas of yourself that you want to be. And when you clear out these old ideas of being married by a certain age or having kids by a certain age, and when you let all that go, you can start to really focus and put all of your attention and energy towards the possible selves and the sides of you that you actually want to create. That is a step to your dream life and to this personal acceptance and self-love journey. When you start to be more intentional about your life, you can stop blaming your circumstances and you can stop blaming everything around you and saying, oh, this is why I'm this way, this is why I'm this way. When you start to take control of your life and you start to take action to make that dream life come to reality, you're gonna realize that this is what you've been waiting for. You're gonna get addicted to that feeling of being able to create what you want and to manifest your desires. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know um, how the exercise went for you or if you have any questions down in the comments below. You know that I always love hearing from you. Otherwise, if you wanna follow me outside of YouTube, I am really active on both Instagram and Twitter um, and I have completely different content on all of my platforms. I love you all so, so much. Happy healing.